What up, YouTube? Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. And today we're going through three tips, three things that you should know about creating an effective crowdfunding campaign strategy. So you're gearing up for the launch of a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo campaign, you're trying to raise money, it depends on the type of category, you might be in film, you might be in theater, you might be launching a tech gadget or a gizmo or design product, it really doesn't matter. These three tips are going to apply to you. I think if you've done any kind of research at all, probably the number one thing that should be on your mind is the word pre-launch, but I don't think we really actually go into that in depth. So the first tip that I wanna do is you need a pre-launch strategy. Now, what does pre-launch actually mean? Because we kind of throw that word around a lot, I think. Um, to me, pre-launch means building up a buzz, building up a sense of something is coming, building up assets like things like an email list or social media profiles. And I know it's very difficult to concentrate on that before you actually go live on Kickstarter, but it makes a tremendous difference. And I'll tell you in just a second why. So things like email list, an email list of people who are interested, who are have expressed some kind of interest in your product or who are actually experienced the problem that your product solves or the solution that you have. Other things like social media. So social media could be things like an Instagram account, Facebook account, Twitter account, basically a place where people can follow you based on the content that you're putting out, the educational content or the cool inspirational stuff that you're putting out. Maybe you're teasing photos and videos of the prototype of this product and people are getting excited. You also can have social media as part of the pre-launch. Now the pre-launch also encompasses other stuff like friends and family, um, warming them up to what Kickstarter is, warming them up to how do you pledge? Why is it that you're doing this? Why is this an important event in your life? You have to make people realize that this is a big thing when it comes to your life that you've been working on. It's not just some hobby that you have. Other stuff could be media outreach. Um, there's a lot that can go into this entire pre-launch cycle, but basically what you're doing is you're warming people up, number one. Number two, you're creating assets that you can draw on like the email list, like social media. And finally, you're giving this expectation that something is coming. So it doesn't seem like spam when you just start to share this link with your friends or people or your followers. You're actually creating expectation that something is coming. Now the second element of an effective crowdfunding campaign strategy actually has to do with when you're live because a lot of the times when you're live, if you do what I say, you, do, you take all these elements, you do an effective pre-launch, you get instant funding on Kickstarter. It's all celebration, you know, handshakes, high fives all the way around the team. And it's awesome, it's a really cool experience, but then something happens. Your campaign begins to lose momentum. It begins to lose the, the level of funding trajectory, as I like to call it, um, that your, your project has. So it's initial boost, but all of a sudden the momentum is slowing and slowing and slowing. What are some of the ways that you can actually encourage, um, build and grow your momentum? The first one is stretch goals. Are things that you unlock as a backer once you reach your certain funding target. So the second you hit $50,000, this whole new tier is unlocked and whatever the, the product is, maybe you get it in a new color, you get it in a new flavor or something different that you, something easy also for you as a creator that you can offer people. If we get to $50,000, we'll do this. If we get to $100,000, we'll do this. Um, so basically giving that sense of belonging and also feeling like if we help this project, if we share it, we might unlock that next, next stretch goal. And actually board games and gaming projects do this really well, I think. Um, another way to maintain momentum are add-ons. So add-ons are kind of like upsells. You can think of them as upsells. Um, it's something where you have a core product and then an add-on is like an attachment to that product. It further expands the functionality of that product or it's something that, that you basically tack on as an extra benefit or as something that people can actually increase their pledge and gain access to this add-on. So the way it would work in the field is uh, if you have a $25 reward tier and then you have an add-on that's $10, the person would increase their pledge by $10 and when you send out your survey on Kickstarter, um, you send out a survey to people, they'll then claim this add-on and in that way they'll also get that shipped to them once you're doing reward fulfillment. Another way to maintain momentum is via Facebook advertising. Facebook ads are a, an awesome way to maintain momentum, um, particularly if you're doing it correctly. If you're going after the right audiences, you have the right uh, ad that actually fits the audience, you're getting click-throughs, you're getting people already interested. Um, so there's some social proof there when they come to the, ad, the actual campaign. Facebook ads are another way to maintain momentum. There's also media. 
Media is a very powerful way to maintain momentum. Also reaching out to influencers, that kind of stuff. Um, other stuff you can do are announcements. So you can actually, I'm, I'm totally gonna misspell that, but announcements. Um, announcements basically, you can think of this as, while yes, the, running a Kickstarter should be organic. You know, it should be something where um, you, you're transparent, you're, the, you're, you're a real person, you're, you're doing this project, you care about it, you're passionate about it. At the same time, you can sort of carefully schedule certain announcements that you might have related to the project or related to your company that are positive and put that out um, as an update on Kickstarter or et cetera, um, depending on wherever you're raising funds. So announcements are another way to maintain momentum, but I think another good thing when it comes to just momentum and this is the last thing I'm gonna say on it, is that you have to maintain this sense that this is a limited opportunity, that the funding goal is limited, that you only have 30 days to get your pledge in. And these are some crucial ways you can actually encourage this. So like early bird reward tiers, reminding people that you, you are, there are only a certain number of them left. That's a great way to maintain momentum. The third and last tip that I have for you when it comes to crowdfunding campaign strategy, and also actually, I actually have a lot more tips that I want to share with you, and I'll actually share something in a moment and ways that you can access some of my best techniques and strategies that I haven't revealed many other places. Um, some of the videos that I have that I wanna share with you actually I haven't revealed anywhere else. Um, so first of all, the, the, the third tip that I have for you is that you want to, this is kind of an exercise. If you have a piece of paper, if you're in the car, you can't do this obviously, but like if you have a piece of paper with you right now, this is a really great exercise to go through. Basically go out and list why people say they are going to back the project. So let's just say um, someone backs the campaign and then they tell their friend or their family member that they just backed this project on Kickstarter. And that friend or the family member says, oh, why did you back it? This is the reason that they're going to give. So some reasons are benefit focused. A benefit focused reason is my back really hurts and this product is going to help with my back pain. Another benefit reason would be like, I hate the exist the bag that I have already. It's always very jumbled up. It's not very organized. This bag has a, a neat compartment for everything. I bought it to simplify and organize my life. Some of the reasons that people will back you are related to the benefits that your product has. And by actually listing out the various reasons why someone will, is gonna tell their friend or their family member why they back this project, it will help you narrow in on the benefits, on your message, on your communication and on your marketing. And finally, you'll have some people say, you know, I just really love Sal, or I really love Tom or Harry or whatever, um, and I just wanted to support them because I like this guy, he's cool. Um, he's one of my good friends, I've known him for a while, this is a thing that's important to him, so I wanted to chip in a little bit to help with his campaign, his crowdfunding campaign. So by asking why, and, and specifically doing this as an exercise and starting to brainstorm the reasons people say in the future that they backed your project, just sort of imagining this in your head in the future, if someone was backing this, what would they say the reason was they did that? That's gonna help you narrow in on the benefits and it's a really great tip for creating a, an effective crowdfunding campaign and also doing the marketing and the messaging for that project. What I wanna share with you now is something that I refer to as the Kickstarter launch formula. And that's because it's taken me many years to develop this. It's taken me many years to sort of narrow in and hone in on any actual triggers that get someone to take action. The triggers that get someone to say, yes, I wanna support this crowdfunding campaign or yes, this sounds really cool. Like I have to share this on Facebook. It sounds dope. Um, the Kickstarter launch formula goes through the exact process that you need to take to get funding from the crowd. And the way I lay it out is literally like a paint by numbers fashion. You, know, you just have to copy what's working. This is the results of many projects that I've worked with, many people that I've coached, uh, many people that have come on my podcast and told us exactly what's working. The Kickstarter launch formula is an amazing starting place if you, number one, have no idea what you're doing, but also if you've educated yourself already a little bit and now you're kind of wondering like okay what do I actually need to do what are the levers that are gonna get someone to say yes when I launch this thing on Kickstarter and I also share other stuff like I have um, downloadable mp3s of all the different lessons that I have in there um, so you can download this and listen to this on the go I also have checklist items things that you need to hit for a really good crowdfunding campaign so if you are at all interested in crowdfunding campaign strategy you found my my advice here to be helpful and to be informative you're going to love the Kickstarter launch formula 
formula. And I'm also gonna include a link down below where I'm giving my YouTube viewers, my YouTube fans, if you will, um, access to this at a discounted price. If you wanna check that out, go and check out the link down below. It will take you there. You can join that. And in that, that course, you can also learn more about ways you can work with me if you wanna hire me personally, if you wanna look and give you feedback. I also share some information on that point. So I hope you liked um, this video. It would mean so much to me if you took a second to just subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, I try to put out really helpful educational content on a regular basis to help you and hold your hand as you're going through with this launch process. I also try to do it with good values and transparency and just quite simply share with you what's working right now when it comes to crowdfunding, when it comes to Kickstarter, when it comes to marketing and sales and all that kind of stuff. And I bring a bit of my personality to the mix also. So would love it if you could take a second to subscribe to this channel. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Hope you like this video and I'll see you next time.